Hello, hello, weirdos. Long time no chit chat. I haven't sat down and done any type of vlog for Coco Naughty in months. I don't know exactly how long it's been, but I know that it's been months. My store officially launched back in October. It is now January, and I thought, can you sit down and have a chit chat? So that's what we are going to do today. My name is Carla. I am the owner of Coco Naughty, which is an art and fashion boutique online. Everything you need to know will be down below. So let's go ahead and get into this little chit chatty vlog. All right. So first and foremost, say hello to my leopard. <laughs> this obnoxious brooch. I will be carrying these in the shop eventually. I've just been testing it. All of my products, I like to wear them for a few weeks, couple months, whatever it is before I actually sell them. So he's coming soon. He's gold, lightweight, but enormous and covered in glitter and he's incredible. But let's go ahead and have a little chit chat. I took just three little quick notes, three little quick notes about things that I wanted to talk about in this little catch up session. Um, my store, how has that been going? It has been slow and steady. I am still, I mean, my store opened in the middle of October. It is now, by the time I'm sitting down to film this, it is not quite the middle of January, but we're creeping up on the middle of January. So October, November, December, January. Only three months, right? But in those three months, a lot has changed. My store, nothing is changing about my store. My aesthetic is not changing. The name is not changing. Nothing, none of that is changing. But Everything that, if you go back and you watch my series of videos that I filmed, which is all about the, the creation of Coco Naughty, right? Creating Coco, how the store came to be, how I came upon the idea for it, what the deal is with the aesthetic and all of that sort of thing. I talked about way back then. So for a full, for damn near a year now, right? I had been wanting to play with the idea of wholesaling clothing, which I still would like to do. And that that was from the jump, I said, I want to wholesale clothing and accessories. I want to sell vintage and then I want to sell my artwork, right? It's going to be an art and fashion boutique of my own creation, right? I am the designer. I am the curator. I am the king and queen of everything over on Coco Naughty, right? That's, that was the whole deal. And while that is still true, the whole idea of wholesaling um, is changing. Not because I do not like the idea of wholesaling because the whole, the whole dream was, oh, one day I want to be able to go to the trade shows and I want to be able to go to Los Angeles as a wholesaler, you know, armed with my wholesaling license and I want to stop shifting. This, this brooch is not designed for little, for little tank tops, right? I didn't clip it on right either, but Anyways, I wanted to go to LA armed with my wholesaling license and I wanted to be able to come home with stacks of products to sell, but I bit off more than I could chew. I have a good amount of stock. Well, not a good amount. It's, it's a small amount of wholesale stock that I will be selling through Coco Nutty. Absolutely. But I'm realizing that wholesalers for small time boutique owners such as myself because I am teeny tiny I'm just one little tiny 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 little monster who owns one little tiny teeny tiny boutique I'm small time no matter how you slice it um, for people like us our options are pretty limited because as a wholesaler number one I do not have the capital to spend thousands and thousands and thousands on wholesale merchandise every few weeks so that's already for me, right? I'm not armed with thousands of dollars. Number two, I live in a one bedroom apartment, one bedroom apartment, and I don't have the space to store thousands and thousands of dollars worth of stock, even if I had the thousands to spend on said stock. Aside from that, the big, big issue here is with customers. As a small time business owner and when, as someone in my position, if I were to go out to a wholesaler, my sizes are limited to essentially small, medium, large. And if I'm lucky, extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. 
okay? So that's, on a good day, at a decent wholesaler, extra small to extra large. Sounds like a decent size range, right? However, I do live in the US, and in the US, people uh, tend to, and this is, this is an umbrella statement, okay? But people tend to need larger sizes. So medium, large, extra large, double XL, triple XL, okay? So already, that's an issue for a wholesaler. When it comes to a small time wholesaler, that's even worse. So it would already cost me thousands to purchase small to large, okay? Add a couple more grand for extra small to extra large. Now imagine my having to purchase a blouse in sizes extra small to quadruple XL, assuming that it's available in quadruple XL because some wholesalers are not, especially wholesalers who are open to selling to small time boutiques, right? Who are only ordering a few pieces of each item. So I just do not, I don't have, I just don't have the money for it. I do not have the capital. Let's let's use the official terminology because ooh, girl boss. I hate that term. Such a pet peeve about girl boss, ooh, boss lady. I hate that shit so much. But this teeny tiny little girl boss, live, laugh, love while you're at it. I do not have the capital nor the space to purchase a super large size range every few weeks. I can't. So that's the big lesson that I've learned. But that's not a bad thing. And here's why. The reality of wholesale has led me to focus almost exclusively on vintage clothing, which is incredible. It's incredible because I am obsessed with what are my favorite decades. If you know me, if you've been around on my other channel, my personal brand, you know, the 70s, the 80s, they have my heart, right? 80s, Art Deco, 70s Art Deco Revival, all of that. I mean, even my hair, if you can see, I mean, we don't, she's not done today, but we've got a 1920s style little flapper girl bob going on. And that's my style. Art Deco, 70s and 80s disco new wave. That's where we are, right? In the whole grand scheme of things, the whole melange that is Carla slash Coco Nati, we're all about that. And then of course, the tropics, right? I'm obsessed with tropical everything. But vintage is where I'm able to focus now. So I'm able to, all of that energy, okay, little leopard, stop. All of the energy that I was expending trying to figure out how I was going to make wholesaling work, you know, with the sizing issues and then with the my having very little capital to play with, I thought, you know what? <laughs> to hell with it. I'm going to let the universe dictate the sizes that I do carry in my store. How? Vintage. Vintage pieces are essentially one of a kind. When I find a gem, I pick it up. That gem can be a size small. That gem could be a double XL. It could be, you know, size like an 80s size, which is incredibly oversized, even though the tag says it's a size six, it will fit a 4XL. So that's the beauty of vintage. That will now allow me to carry a range of sizes that I have zero control over. I don't run into the issue of making customers feel excluded because that's the thing as well is when I'm shopping for clothing, my customers don't realize that I'm limited to my own budget and I'm limited to what my wholesalers carry. So it's not that I'm trying to say, ugh, you're a double XL, like, ugh, you're not the Coco Naughty Girl or boy or creature, whatever the hell you are, I, the whole identifier thingy. I don't know, whatever you are, I don't care. You can identify as a slice of cheesecake for all I care. Whatever it is, I don't care what size you are. I don't care what size you are. My concern is making you dress as funky fabulous as you feel. But because I am limited to the sizes that I could carry, I feel as though my customers would come to Coco Naughty, look through all of my stock and go, I love this and I love this. 
but I can't fit into it because she only carries small, medium, large. Is she doing it on purpose? Is she purposely trying to exclude me? Because ouch, right? And that's not the case. That's not what I'm doing. It's just I am beholden to what is available to me as a small time wholesaler and I am at the mercy of my own budget. So this alleviates all of that trauma and stress, right? My customers know that with vintage, Maybe it's going to come in your size or it's not. And I run into that issue a lot too, where I, f- I find vintage pieces that are either way too small. How in the hell did people have waists this big back in the 70s and 80s? Girl, I have no clue. But I have found many pieces that I cannot fit into. And that's why shopping for vintage now, I have come up with clever little ways to style oversized pieces. I'm a big fan of the cinch belts, which you see a lot in my photos and the way that I style the clothing. I sell them in the store, by the way, if you would like a cinch belt. I mean, it makes you look snatched and it makes everything fit, right? I am typically a size small, not an extra small. I'm pretty firmly a size small, but I can fit into a double XL if I cinch it, snatch it, and style it just right. And so that way, even if you are a size small and you see a size large, baby, buy it. You can make it work. If you are a size quadruple XL and you see something that is tagged a size four, double check the measurements because it might actually be your size because 80s clothing is cut, not all of it, but a lot of it is cut oversized. So that's the big lesson that I've learned with the sizing. So long story longer, am I going to stop selling wholesale clothing? No, I am sitting on a on a decent, not huge, but not too tiny. I'm, I'm, I have a little box that's a decently sized box of clothing that I am going to be releasing on um, Coco Nadi as I feel it's appropriate, you know, seasonally, collection-wise, theme, whatever it is. So I'm not going to stop seeking out wholesale clothing, but it is going to be extremely limited because most of my energies and most of my money is going to be going to focusing on vintage. Now, accessories, those are one size fits all, right? So I'm still going to carry my funky earrings, my funky brooches, all of that. We are still going to be wholesaling all of that and that will always be available. If you find a piece of vintage clothing that you like, go ahead and shop the accessories. You might pick up some funky earrings that go along with it, right? So that's fun. So wholesaling, not going anywhere, but it's definitely changing. My mindset on that has completely changed and that was something that I needed to learn. Uh, it was trial by fire. I had to learn through doing. I had to set up the store and I had to see how people were reacting to my sizes, the kind of questions that I was getting, like, hey, Carla, are you ever gonna carry this skirt in a 4XL? Hey, Carla, are you ever gonna carry this top in a double XL? And I thought, oh, this is an issue. So I learned it by trying. So that was the big lesson that I have learned. Next, artwork. <clears throat> I launched Coco Naughty as an art and fashion boutique. Because my the clothing selections that I carry, they are very, they're vintage, retro, funky, 1970s, 1980s, with a huge sprinkle of, sprinkling of Miami Vice. We're all into the tropical cocktails. I'm a tiki girl, if you did not know, if you are new to this whole channel Coco Naughty thing, I'm a tiki freak. I love tiki cocktails. I'm the one who's going to dress up like a 1980s new wave vampire with giant disco boots, go out to a nightclub, and I'm going to order the giant pina colada, right? I am, by all intents and purposes, a 1980s tropical goth who loves disco, right? Does that make any bit of sense? That That's me. That is coconut. Just visit my website and you'll see what I mean. It's a uh, It's bright, it's funky, it's a little bit dark, right? And so that's what my artwork is. It's retro, it's funky, it's a little gothy. And moving forward, I do have a selection of tiki artwork, you know, tiki mugs, funky stuff like that. But I want to bring my other artwork into the fold as well. I want to use Coco Nadi as a place to showcase my work as an artist, because if you did not know, I have a whole nother YouTube channel, whole nother website. Excuse me, I got a little air bubbly burpee. I'm still sick. I woke up New Year's Day 
literally woke up New Year's Day sick as hell and I'm barely starting to get over it, but I'm still congested. So I feel as though oh, I'm short of breath and I can't breathe. I'm congested, right? So I have to take a lot of deep breaths. If you see me heaving, that's why, because I'm talking too damn much and I'm running out of breath. But anyway, I have a whole nother world. It's under my, my name, my first name, my last name. I have a website. I have a whole nother YouTube channel, just a whole world that has existed prior to Coco Naughty, right? And um, I used to sell exclusively on Etsy. And after creating Coco Naughty, I thought I need to phase the hell out of Etsy. Etsy needs to leave. Etsy is bending me over and putting me through it with their fees, okay? I'm an artist. I struggle as it is, right? Am I a starving artist? No, but baby, I'm not living in a mansion with a Maserati. Not that I want all of that, to be clear, but just to give you an idea, like that's not my life. And so if I'm an artist trying to make a living on Etsy and they're taking a chunk of my earnings, I don't mind paying a little bit. You know, I, I understand it's a platform that comes with fees. I get it. But Etsy's bullshit is we're going to pay celebrities to make commercials for us. We're going to pay celebrities to endorse Etsy. So, hey, you, Carla, bend over. Give us $25 more so we can pay said celebrity and take it out of your coffers. Oh, no, ma'am, no, bitch, you're not doing that to me anymore. I want to be a fully autonomous creature. And so my artwork is going to go to my website, to Coco Naughty. So that's that on that. This year is going to see an influx of so much more of my artwork because Etsy's getting kicked to the curb, essentially. I'm still using it for a few things, but for the most part, the bulk of my artwork is going to be on coconati.com. So that's exciting. Art, fashion, me, yay. Um, I suppose that's it. I'm going to go ahead and just leave it at that today because I don't want to I don't I, I don't want to get my feet wet. I don't want to jump into the mud too much yet. Uh, but that's that's where we're going. Focusing heavily on vintage this year and also bringing my artwork into the boutique. Because again, I want this store to be all about me, my art, my design, my curation, just my eye as a creative, as an artist. I want people to be able to come to my website and be inspired. Even if people are not interested in my vintage clothing whatsoever, maybe they are inspired by the color palettes or the aesthetic. Maybe they, they see everything and they're like, you know, I'm not as funky and bold and just this. I'm not as this as Carla is, but I'm going to pick up a sticker. I'm going to pick up an art print or I'm going to pick up a pair of sunglasses or a pair of earrings. You know, it's, it's going to be a boutique of me and a boutique for everyone who is not afraid to just be a little bit funky. I want everybody to feel comfortable enough to wear what they want. What, what is that expression? Let your freak flag fly or whatever it is. I want Coco Naughty to be that place where it's like, you know what? If you want to dress funky today, pull up a chair, grab a pina colada, just some kind of cocktail or virgin mocktail. Those are just as delicious. Pull up a drink with a freaking umbrella on it. Dress funky. Have a good time. That's what it's all about. So thank you for joining me on this channel and for this rather lengthy chit chatty little, it's not so much a vlog, it's just a, a catch up session, right? But I appreciate your being here. If you are interested in Coco Naughty, take a look down below. Uh, links to the website, links to the social media will be down there. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. And please, please do me the favor if you enjoyed this video, like it, subscribe to the channel and follow me on Instagram. That is going to do it for today. Weirdos, take a look down below. Everything you ever need to know will be down below. Stay spicy, be naughty, do all of the funky things, and I will see you in the next one.